I wanted to look at a problem that involves pressure and notions, concepts of pressure. Uh, and this problem is a problem of a barometer, a device for measuring pressure. Now, what we're going to do is actually calculate the height of a column of liquid in the, in the barometer. And actually that height of the liquid is how we, is what we use to measure the pressure with the barometer. Uh, the greater the height of liquid in the barometer, the greater the pressure. Um, the lower the height of liquid in the barometer, the lower pressure. Now some barometers, generally barometers are uh, used mercury as the liquid, um, but you could make a barometer, you, you could construct a barometer with water as the liquid. And we're going to consider the height of the mercury in a barometer when it's exposed to atmospheric pressure. We're going to consider the height of um, water in a barometer when it's exposed to atmospheric pressure. So first let me just tell you um, the construction of the barometer, what the barometer looks like. And then we'll go on and, and calculate the heights of the water and heights of the uh, mercury. So, so here's a sketch of the barometer. There's a open container here at the bottom of barometer. And then there's a closed tube here in the center of the barometer. And um, the container is filled with the liquid mercury or water, and that liquid or mercury, uh, that fluid is also in, in the closed tube here. But there's an important point. The container is exposed to atmospheric pressure downstairs here. Inside the tube, the tube is closed. And so at the top of the tube here is a region of zero pressure, vacuum. And if the pressure in the location of the barometer was to change, was to go up or go down, then the height of the liquid would correspondingly go up and go down. Now, to understand the working of the barometer, we want to focus on the liquid inside the closed tube. So it's this region from the vacuum upstairs here to the level of atmospheric pressure downstairs here. I called the cross section of the tube A, it's a number of square meters, I called the height of the uh, uh, column of liquid in the tube, I called the H, it's a number of meters. The volume will be the product of the height and the cross section. That's a number of cubic meters. Now, what I wanna add to the picture is the forces that are acting on the on that column of mercury. Then we're gonna take those forces that are acting on the column of mercury and use that to calculate the height of the column of mercury from the fact that that column of mercury or that column of water is, um, is sitting there at rest and it's staying there. So one obvious force on the column of mercury is the force of gravity, the weight of the column of mercury. And we could write that weight as mass times acceleration of gravity, mg. Or what's more useful here, we can write the mass in terms of the density of the mercury times the um, volume of mercury, because that is the mass of mercury, times the acceleration of gravity. So, so that is uh, the weight. And we could write that as rho a h g now there's a second force that's acting on the column of mercury and that's actually due to the fluid inside the um, open ended open container here and in turn it's due to the atmosphere that's surrounding the open container here so there's a pressure in the fluid. And if I call that pressure at this location here, if I call that pressure, say, P2, then that pressure at that location at P2 is going to be the same as the atmospheric pressure just above the 
close the surface of the liquid in the open container. That pressure creates a force. I'll call that F2. It's equal to that pressure, P2, times the um, cross-sectional area of that column of mercury. That's the for upwards force on that column of mercury. And as I say, that, that pressure P2 inside the column, at the base of the column, um, is equal to atmospheric pressure because it's the same height as the surface of the liquid to the left and right of the column. So it's going to be P0 times A. That's an upwards force that's acting. You could ask the same question about this region at the top. Is there a downwards force acting from this region at the top? If there was pressure upstairs here, pressure P1, then there would be a downwards force. But in this case, right, that, um, that downwards force, I'll call it F1, which would be equal to the pressure P1 at the top times the cross-sectional area. Uh, that's zero because this vacuum in this, this region at the top of the closed tube and the pressure in the vacuum is zero. So that's zero. Well, those are the forces that are acting. And uh, those forces add up to make zero net force because the column of mercury is at rest and it's staying at rest. So we can write that fact down that the sum of the forces that are acting on the column of mercury or acting on the column of water must, must add up to zero. And one of the forces is the, uh, is the weight. I'm gonna call that weight, I'm gonna write it as minus W, minus meaning is just downwards and, and W being the, the size of the gravitational force. And then we got a second force that's upwards, called it F2. It's from the um, uh, liquid immediately below the column of mercury. And then in principle, there could be another force F1, uh, but we've said that if we have vacuum here, then that, that force is zero. And these two forces add up to make a net force, a zero net force on the column of mercury. Well, this tells us that the downwards force of weight on the column of mercury is actually exactly balanced by the upwards force due to the pressure below the column of mercury. And we can use that relation, right, that weight equals this upwards force arising from the pressure. And if we substitute in uh, expressions for the weight and for the pressure, for the force, we get the following. So rho A H G is the weight. P naught, atmospheric pressure times the cross-sectional area of the column is the force. And the areas cancel out. And we're left with, if we rearrange this equation, an equation for the height of the column of mercury or the column of water. So I've just got to divide by rho and divide by g. And so this is the equation for a barometer. It tells you the height of the column of the liquid, the fluid that's in the barometer. In terms of um, the pressure which the barometer is exposed to, that's the P0, that's the atmospheric pressure. And then in terms of the um, uh, density of the fluid, and the density of the fluid sits inside the denominator. And so a more dense fluid like mercury will have a smaller height, a less dense fluid like water will have a larger height. And then there's also the acceleration of gravity inside that equation for the height. If there was no gravity, no acceleration of gravity, no force of gravity, no weight, then the barometer would never work. Um, if you were to take the barometer to the moon, where the acceleration of gravity is smaller, then the height of the column would be much larger. If you would take it to Jupiter, where the acceleration of gravity is much larger, then the height of column would be, um, would be considerably smaller. Anyway, um, we can now use this equation for the two cases. 
So for Mercury, I'm going to put a little subscript HD, the symbol for Mercury on the H. The height will be atmospheric pressure, one times 10 to the five newtons per square meter divided by the density of mercury. I'm just looking it up right now. It's 13.5 times 10 to the three kilograms per meter cubed times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Don't need to look that up. And if I carry out that calculation, I get 0 0.76 meters. And so that would be the height of a column of mercury, mercury that would correspond to atmospheric pressure. I can do the same thing for water. So height subscript H2O for the water. And what's the column's height if I expose it to atmospheric pressure? So here's the atmospheric pressure. Uh, the density of water, that's easy to remember. It's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. That's impossible to forget. And if we do that little calculation, I've worked that out too, and the result for that is 10.2 meters. And so if we had built a mercury barometer, we built a water barometer, these are the heights of the mercury columns and the water columns that we would measure um, if that barometer was exposed to atmospheric pressure. You'll notice that the column of water is about 13 to 14 times higher than the column of mercury because the density of water is about 13 to 14 times smaller than the density of mercury. That's how you make a barometer. Um, and it's how we can measure the changes in pressure that correspond to changes in the weather um, in, our, in our atmosphere. So it's a very useful device. And it's a very interesting example of uh, pressure and forces and uh, notions of um, pressure and forces and the relationship between pressures and forces.